Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, today we're going to have a look at some pencil drawing techniques um, and specifically looking at some of the tools and examining how we can create shading effects. Uh, to, so to start off with I'm actually going to start talking about some of the equipment that uh, I like to use and some of the reasons why I like to use them as well. And starting off is our good old friend the pencil. Now this one here is an HB, he's a little bit worn um, but you should be able to identify markings on the pencils to say whether it's an HB or a 2B or whatever. So um, a quick rundown on the differences between these. Uh, essentially you can go from a very fine pencil uh, like an F and then you go into the hard pencils um, and you know you can go through those and then um, eventually you get to the black pencils. So black, when we start to get into the black, we end up with uh, slightly darker pencils and then you go up to 2B, 3B, 4B, etc, etc. And they can get really dark. This one here is an 8B, which is going to be very dark. Um, um, the trouble with that is we start getting darker, they also tend to get softer. So we end up with a lot of smudging with these and it can also be very unforgiving when we start erasing. So if I grab my 8B here at the moment and I can start shading, as you can see it's coming out pretty dark and if I grab my finger and smudge that it's, it's pretty messy. So if your hands resting on the page um, that's going to get pretty smudgy pretty quickly. Um, whereas if I use this one here which is an HB um, I can get some pretty light lines with this. I can also get relatively dark with it, but I can't get as dark as I can if I press really hard with that 8B. Um, so, you know, select what pencils are going to be best for what you want to use. Um, now, I've actually got some F pencils which are extremely fine, um, but typically what I would recommend using is a HB which is sort of your standard office pencil it's sort of the transition point between a, a hard pencil um, and a black pencil so it's got a little bit of darkness to it it's your standard office pencil and then what I'll typically use as well is a 2B and a 2B is going to be a little bit darker um, and that's going to be great for adding a little bit of shadows and stuff like that uh, as far as quality of pencils, you do get a varying range of qualities. Um, these are these um, really nice ones by um, Blackwing. Very nice quality, nice feel to them. Um, and you can get other stuff. This is a Faber-Castell uh, Graphite Aquarel. Um, and they are similar to Aquarel pencils in the sense that they do have water solubility to them. So you can actually draw stuff out and then I'm just going to use a bit of water and smudge that. So they're very very useful for that sort of thing and I will quite often have a, just a little a paintbrush that I can use uh, for smearing that out a bit. But that's sort of a you know a, a different technique we're ending in, going to end up with a watercolor sort of technique than that. Um, techniques we're going to really going to hit today is just using basic HB and 2B pencils. Um, one of the techniques I, I really don't recommend using is the smudging technique. Um, it's it's a nice trick if you to use, but it's it ends up making things look very very messy. Um, try and keep your workspace clean, keep your hands clean. If you do start noticing graphite accumulating on your hands, clean it up, dry your hands. You don't want to get a wet page; it'll start ripping the page and stuff like that. Um, so do keep that in mind. While we're on the subject of this, uh, I do also want to mention the quality of paper can be quite important. Um, for this I'm just using standard printer paper, A4 printer paper. Um, really not the best paper to use for drawing. Um, if you press really hard after a while it will indent through to the other side, bit hard to see there. Um, if you get it wet it will start crumpling, it will start breaking apart. And if you start erasing, you're really just going to start breaking the fibers apart. So it depends on what you want to go for. If you want to go for an aquarel sort of situation, you can get some really good quality aquarel papers out there. 
um, and you can spend a lot of money on paper as well. Um, I tend to go, if I'm going to do a really good picture, I will go for some of the cotton um, rag papers, they're made out of 100% cotton. Um, they're quite expensive and you can get some really nice hot pressed ones which are very smooth, um, which is the stuff that I tend to go for as well. So do, you know, if you are looking at buying paper or stuff, um, I tend to feel the texture of it. Um, if it's very rough, it's going to be, you know, more for your crayon um, uh, pastels and stuff like that it holds a texture. If you're going for pencil, I tend to go for something really smooth um, and you know something that's got a bit of weight to it as well. So paper's generally measured in um, uh, GSM and you know something with a bit of weight to it. And I also uh, a bit hard to see through this, but um, check for mottling. Um, if you hold it up to the light, you can sort of see a mottling. And I tend to look for something with a nice solid weave. You will notice the difference when you start getting into this and you start really figuring out your pencils and stuff. Um, but for this case, whatever you can muster, um, we're going to just work with 2B and HB at this point. Um, and I tend to find anything darker than that can be really quickly getting too messy and too dark very, very quickly. Uh, while we're on the subject of types of pencils, um, mechanical pencils is one that comes up to. Uh, should I use mechanical pencils? Um, the realistic point is whatever is going to work for the thing that you're trying to produce. So the big problem with um, your standard pacer or mechanical pencils is they tend to be very good for doing single line, very fine detail sort of stuff, um, but they are very limited in doing that. You're going to spend a lot of time doing very, very fine lines and depending on your means that might not be everything that's going to be required. Um, I do like using uh, the larger mechanical pencils. This one here has got a, a 2B lead in it at the moment, um, but you can purchase um, leads for them individually. They've got a little gripping mechanism there, and at the back of them they have a sharpener built in for that, so you can pop that off and sharpen that on the go. Um, they're really quite useful, and the reason why I tend to go for these and your more traditional pencils is because you can vary your drawing styles. You can turn them onto the side and you can do some really interesting shading on the side as well as using the point and you can really get some variance and, and like with that with the mechanical pencil as well. So you really do get to sort of use the full gamut of that which you don't in the other. A uh, quick word on erasers. Um, getting a decent eraser is really worthwhile. Um, anything you get out of a Christmas cracker is usually going to smudge the hell out of anything. Do try and get your erasers nice and clean before you use them. Um, if, you've got a, if you're wearing clothes that are a bit scruffed and need a wash anyway, you can just rub them against a bit of fabric um, and you can give them a nice clean up before you start using them. Uh, what you don't want to do is start you know, erasing and um, smudging at the same time. So we use erasers not just for fixing mistakes but for creating negative space, so getting us back to the white of the page so we can get things like reflections to really pop up and doing general cleanups as well. Um, when you are erasing always remember to support your page, particularly if it's a loose bit of paper and it's not that heavy um, because the last thing you want to do is sort of you know, move and scrunch the page while you're doing it. So you don't want to ruin your image by the end of it by scrunching. So make sure your page is supported and really control the erasing as you go and keep it nice and soft and nice gentle strokes. Just don't grind away with it um, and destroy it. So get yourself a decent quality eraser. Um, make sure it's, it's cleaned up before you use it. Um, other types of erasers out there, this one's been work, worked down, is a little pencil style eraser and you can peel that back and it's got a more of a pencil kind of nib. They're great for doing cleanups of fine detail. And the other one as well that I use on occasions is this pliable looks like um, uh, blue tack and it's a kneadable eraser and you can sort of get this to shape and you can use that for um, creating nice little uh, cleanups of your 
image. So there they are there, there's you know three different recommendations for that. There's some other a whole heap out there, there's plenty of different drawing equipment that you can get. Um, quality really does matter when it comes to drawing. Uh, good quality paper, good quality pencils, good quality erasers um, really do make a difference um, and you know I, I tend to find these certain brands of pencils that work better than others so an HB is not just an HB. Um, other thing I want to mention quickly is sharpening your pencils. Um, there's our good old-fashioned sharpener um, you know been around forever. Uh, if you do notice that when you are sharpening your pencil particularly with these sort of um, sharpeners, this is quite a nice one, um, and you're sharpening it and the the graphite or the lead keeps breaking. Um, one of the things that a lot of people will mention is it may be that you've dropped your pencil or and broken the leads in it, um, but it also could mean that the uh, blades in your sharpener are getting a little bit blunt or they've got a little nick in them, and as you're sharpening it's grabbing hold of the graphite and snapping that as you go. So if it keeps doing that it might be an opportunity that you need to get a new sharpener or replace the blades of these. So um, Some of the older ones used to have um, you could repurchase um, just the blades or they had a spare blade that you could swap over. Um, but if that keeps happening then it might be an opportunity to get a new eraser. Um, over here this is a grinding pencil sharpener. Um, if I open this up, you'll see it's got a little grinding mechanism in here. Um, these work really well for if you're doing lots and lots of sharpening, and particularly if you're doing um, you know stuff with soft pencils and, and the likes. And you can use these to um, to grind and sharpen your pencils. And they will typically, very rarely, will you actually break the graphite in them as well. Um, they can be quite expensive. Um, you, you can pick up some reasonable price ones, or you can spend you know a hundred plus dollars on them. But you know, uh, depends what you're using. Uh, some of the other things worth potentially looking at. Um, you can get um, these are sort of Aquatone colours um, and stuff like that. And you know, these can be good for adding a little bit of flavour to your um, images. And another one I also use in the similar one is these ones are sort of falling apart a little bit. Let's see if I can find a bigger bigger piece here. Um, is the water soluble in white? And I use this sometimes if I've really gone into a lot of uh, detail in an image and I want to just add a little speck of white, you know, in the corner of an eye or a nose or something like that. Um, I'll get that with you know a nice little paintbrush and just wet the end and just get a little bit of speck of white and just add that to an image so little highlights and stuff like that can be really really useful. Uh, other things that we're going to need um, we are going to need to draw some straight lines so I recommend getting yourself a, a ruler of some description um, and you know while we're not going to really use much of the measurements or anything like that um, anything with a straight edge should do um, so we can set up some guides and stuff like that. Um, also we need to draw a circle as well and you can get yourself a compass or protractor. Um, I'm just going to use this little coffee cup here and draw around it to get my sphere shape uh, for that. So you know think outside the box if you need to um, and get the stuff that you need. So you know good quality paper if possible you know if you want to do a really good image. Um, 2B HB pencil. I'm going to be using the mechanical pencil but a standard 2B HB pencil should be fine and get yourself an eraser and of course a sharpener. Um, and that's pretty much all we really need um, is the, the basic ingredients for be able to get some really really fantastic drawings out. So um, that's sort of a quick recap on the basics of what we're going to need for this and uh, in just a moment we'll jump in and I'll show you guys how to apply some shading techniques. Hey everyone, uh, in this video we're going to have a look at how light uh, affects a sphere on this uh, plane that I've created and it's really important that we do understand how light is working. So when we come to shading an object we're not just shading 
I'm going to shade an area dark that's further away from the light or vice versa and we need to realize that light is a bounced substance so if we do look at the sphere here this is a, a wooden sphere and if we look at this point here we can sort of see that there is a highlight point now this is the closest point of the sphere to the light the lights coming along and it's hitting that point so being a curved object as we spread out from there uh, it's going to light is going to become more dissipated so from our highlight we get half tones and then eventually we get to the point where around the um, rear side of that sphere we start getting the core shadow so the core shadow is sort of around the hemisphere that is furthest away from the light and you can see it's sort of big sort of triangular area that curves around to the base there and when we get beyond that as we get to even further around we'll actually notice there's a bit of light starting to seep through again and then we get all the way down to the base here where it's very very dark and we get our occlusion shadows and the occlusion shadow basically is where we have very little to no light actually reaching that. Other things you're going to notice is as the shadow heads out we also get a similar sort of thing. We get um, dark areas and we get light areas and we also get a blur happening on the outside of our shadow and it will also appear a little bit sharper in as we go here. So we need to sort of think about how this is working. One of the ways this is working is the light is coming along it's hitting that core shadow, it's bouncing off and hitting our eyes. So that's kind of where the light works. So everything that we see is based on light. And then we get around here and everything gets darker. But one of the questions you might want to ask is why is this area down here slightly lighter than our core shadow? And the real reason for that is the light is coming through and it's sitting on a surface. So it's hitting that surface and then it's bouncing back onto the sphere. So light's hitting here and here and here and here and it's all bouncing back and it's creating that light area on the surface. The other thing to remember is not only is it hitting there, once it hits there it then further bounces back and hits that surface. So that's one of the reasons why we do end up getting a blurred area on the outside of this. As we get further and further in, there's less light bouncing up and down. It gets dissipated and we end up with what is called the occlusion, occlusion shadow through here. So reflected light is going to come through from there. And as, our, as I mentioned before, as our shadow starts coming out, it's going to get lighter and lighter. And then we're going to end up getting a slight blur around the outside so it's ever so slight the more intense your light source um, and the more precise it is the stronger that shadow is so if you notice if it's a very bright day in the middle of summer and very intense light minimal cloud cover you're going to notice your shadow is going to be very very dark and very very precise whereas if it's a cloudy day you probably may not even notice your shadow because that light is dissipated, it's bouncing all over the place and your shadow becomes less obvious. So it is important that we realize that and that we can represent a sphere and once we understand how light works on a sphere we can start figuring out how it works on every other object around us, whether it's a person, a face and all the rest of it. Best thing to use is observation for this and if you can find a sphere that you can place with a single or you know major light source on an object um, it's a great opportunity for you to really get some practice in on drawing a sphere and getting these things like reflected light, core shadows, half tones, highlights, center lights, cast shadows and occlusion shadows. Um, so really really interesting the way that light works and you know be aware of that. When we start introducing multiple light sources things get really really funky and when we start adding colour and stuff it gets really really freaky. So be aware of it and let's see if we can find out ways of applying our shading techniques to create something that's going to look like a decent sphere.
Hey everyone, uh, in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to tackle uh, drawing a sphere and also being aware of the lighting and the shadows um, as discussed in a prior tutorial. So here's my sphere here. Um, you can use a reference uh, which I highly do recommend um, and it could be, like here I've got a wooden sphere, um, passion fruit, apple, um, now each object is going to have different reflectivity on it. Uh, if you get something matte, like uh, something made out of um, carpet for example, it's going to get more of a dissipated light. If you get something like a mirror, um, you're going to get complete reflect um, reflectiveness. So be aware of that. Um, I'm going to stick with using uh, just a simple HB pencil and also uh, a 2B pencil. As I mentioned before, this one is a mechanical pencil but it will do the same job as a regular pencil and I'm going to be using not just the tip of the pencil but also the sides of the pencil for shading as well. Um, so to start with I'm going to just create a circle. Um, for this I'm going to use this uh, little cup that I've got here. Um, you can use a compass, protractor, anything that you can find to make a reasonable size circle. You don't want to make it too small um, because you want to be able to get enough detail in your shading to show the graduation of it um, and you don't want anything too big otherwise you're going to be shading forever so uh, I'm just going to place my hand on that and I'm just going to do a very light line around the base and that is going to define my circle so um, probably should have made it a little bit darker for you guys so I will make it a little bit darker just for demo reasons but realistically it would be a guide a um, little bit of a divot there but that's fine okay so um, if you are using a reference you should be able to figure this out anyway um, but I'm going to start off with adding a highlight to that I'm just going to put my sphere off to the side so I can use it as a reference um, so I'm seeing it from a different angle than you are I've got the camera above me um, but I'm going to identify a few things first and I'm going to do this very very lightly. Now remember with pencils the harder you press the darker or the more graphite that's going to be coming through so you want to really learn how to do a very very light touch to start with so uh, it doesn't become permanent. The darker your pencil if you get up to an H 8B it's going to be very hard to erase it as well so keep it very very light. So I'm just going to identify my hotspot or my highlight and I'm just going to use some very very light strokes for that Unfortunately, the camera is dipping in and out of focus. From there, it's going to dissipate around and it's going to essentially come through and it's going to reach my core shadow. So my core shadow is sort of the hemisphere as that light dissipates around. I'm going to draw some little arrows and stuff. Um, as that light dissipates around, uh, it's going to get lighter and lighter and then it's going to hit the core shadow. Now it's important to remember that light and shadow um, interact with each other so you very rarely get something that's completely night and dark shadow there's usually a variation between because that light is having an argument with the shadow essentially and we get the sort of blurred effect so even close up and this is one of the techniques that Leonardo actually used when doing his paintings as well he made sure that everything had a slight haze to it on the border of the light and shadow. As I'm looking at my sphere I'm noticing that it is getting a little bit lighter as it dissipates around and then eventually it's hitting a, a very very dark area underneath also known as the occlusion shadow and you just want to observe how that is gone through as well. From there my shadow actually starts coming out a little bit and I'm going to do this in passes so I want to be observant of how far that comes out so use your observation skills for that and observe how that shadow comes out and you can start just guiding it out so you notice I'm just sort of plotting out where everything is at the moment and keeping it relatively light and then towards the end it's going to get very very light indeed um, once I've got this planned out um, I'm going to use my powers of observation, yes. Um, I'm actually going to start shading in these areas 
and getting an idea of how I'm going to start doing this. So with shading I recommend that you do the sh different shading techniques for this and you know you can try things like cross hatching and stuff like that but I really recommend for this try and get a nice gradual shadow so this could mean that you build up over time um, and you can also try using the side pencil technique so you really want to try and keep this as neat as possible um, as you build this up the harder you press yes the darker it is but I recommend building up gradually and then really getting used to getting that light line very very light as we go so be aware of your darkest point and for this first part I recommend using just an HB pencil and then at the end step in with something like a 2B pencil to really hit those uh, really dark areas those occlusion shadows underneath so do get used to using your pencil for these sort of things um, you know I've been using the different techniques for quite a long time now so I recommend having a go with that uh, I'm going to do a quick time lapse of this um, switching out between my pencils and hopefully you'll see the result as it appears Okay, um, here's my shaded sphere. Uh, a couple of things I just wanted to sort of have a look at quickly. Um, in all, this took me about five minutes to, to put together. Um, we are starting to notice, uh, if you have a look around here, that we are getting sort of a, a little bit of a mottling effect. Uh, and this is just due to the quality of the paper. So as you get finer and finer paper, you can get less of that. And hopefully what you noticed when I was using the drawing through the time lapse is I wasn't just using the point of my pencil I was also using the side so I was quite often holding it like that and gradually building up um, over time um, because this is a sphere you may have also noticed that a lot of my drawing involved uh, going into the curvature of the object so rather than just filling it in line by line like a printer um, I was you know following the shape of that and then gradually just trying to build up that form as it goes around. So I'm being aware that it is a, a sphere and then gradually building it up. Um, I changed out to a number of different pencils from HB and then down to 2B so I could start getting a little bit more 
darkness and shadow and then just you know just kept building it up so um, and the idea behind building it up gradually is that you're not just jumping in and it's not a colouring by numbers sort of thing it's a matter of you know being aware of the values and then gradually building them up from there um, and then you know really find out what is your darkest point and your lightest point and then figuring out you know how to do that so you can actually get quite a bit of detail without going to full black or full white um, now another couple of things just to sort of keep an eye on is in drawing um, and also the way that light works if you really want to get something to be extremely bright what you can do is put it in contrast to something extremely dark so this top part of the sphere here um, I could actually get that to seem brighter by putting a little bit of a darkness um, on the back of it so that's actually going to get allow me to sort of get that popping out and then you can if you get really good you can sort of get that to fade out to white again and that's just going to make this edge stand out a little bit um, so you know it's a nice little trick for doing that sort of thing we don't always have to have that other important thing to remember with drawing is that objects aren't made up of lines so if we're drawing an animated character or cartoon character yes they might have an outline but objects do not have a line defining them it's it's pretty much an object so you really want to blur that edge on where that line is and where the background is and by blurring I don't mean smudge it um, hopefully you also notice that I at no point did I grab my finger and start smudging those lines it's a very very messy technique using that um, it's quite amateur as well in most cases um, so you know rather get used to the techniques of blending naturally with your pencil um, to get the form that you need so follow the shape of the object build up gradually um, use the side of your pencil to get some nice big areas and really get used to the technique and you know follow the form um, final touch-ups for this as I said this is a quite a quick one is I'm going to use uh, the eraser for this uh, I'm going to do some a uh, little bit more precision erasing so I'm just cleaning this off at the moment I'm going to use this little one here it's got, as you can see the start off the size of a regular pencil and it's already is now and I'm going to use this just to clean up um, make sure you keep your hands relatively clean you get a little brush for this sort of thing and I'm going to use that for doing some cleanup um, and not only can you use it for cleanup you can also use it for enhancing some of your line work so as I've done this um, just outside from my core shadow which is this dark line that cuts through here is my reflected light and I might just want to lighten that up a little bit and I'm just going to build just a little bit of a thing using that now big one with erasing this is really going to put to test the quality of your paper um, I'm just using a, a cheap photocopying paper for this and it is going to start smudging more it's going to start breaking my paper a little bit more so if you do want a good quality drawing I do recommend getting some decent quality drawing paper um, so you know get it specific uh, I've mentioned before uh, hard pressed cotton paper it's expensive but if you're going to get really into some good drawing uh, it d really does help for that and I'm just going to do a further clean up just get rid of any sort of guidelines and stuff like that and just clean up some edges there keep it nice and neat and good quality eraser really does count as well clean 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 um, and then once you've done that you can go back and just add in any finer details that you need and then hopefully you'll get a pretty good idea of this so remember key elements for this um, and I'm going to draw on this and kind of destroy it is get your center light happening um, as that dissipates around to the hemisphere sort of where the cutoff of the light is you'll notice that the shadow starts picking up through there 
and of course that's going to dissipate outwards as well so that's why it's not just a solid black line it starts off dark and then it gradually gets less as the light starts invading it and because this is curved try and think of it like a globe of the world it is going to you know, go around in like little hemispheres and stuff like that the light itself is hitting this point here and it's hitting the ground as it passes through and then it's going to hit the ground and it's going to bounce back up and that's why we get this little occlusion uh, just past the occlusion shadow is the reflected light and that's going to reflect all the way through there um, at the very base of our object and just around the edge a little bit this is where we get our occlusion shadow um, so it basically it's where we've got our most minimal amount of light so this is most shadow most darkness remember that shadow is or darkness is the absence of light and that's going to be the darkest part is around there because that light is bouncing back and forth between there our shadow then depending on the direction of your light source is going to sort of come out from the opposite of there and also with that you are going to get things like reflected light even in your shadow so your light's going to come through it's going to bounce off the ground it's going to hit your object where your reflect reflected light is and then it's going to bounce back and create a light area around there and then as you get further away from your object um, your shadow is going to get lighter and lighter and then as you get to the end uh, it's going to get particularly further away it's going to get blurrier and blurrier towards the end closer in the shorter the shadow is and the more intense the light is towards the area the sharper the shadow the further away the softer it is um, and it'll sort of blur out a little bit so use observation for this use objects around you and see if you can notice how that light bounces around and practice good drawing technique um, build up your lines gradually uh, like I've done here um, and you know follow the shape of your object when you are shading and that will give you a more convincing shadow effect um, rather than just doing big blocks all in the same line um, you know cross hatching techniques are great stippling's great um, but the one I really recommend for this one is try and get used to that very nice gradual blending from light to dark and see if you can get it so it doesn't really appear that you have any specific lines it's going to be a you know, really precise drawing technique um, and you know if you can get hold of that and get that skill up um, you're going to have be an absolute force to re be reckoned with when it comes to drawing and illustration.